we begin the current Dab Mesech the Shabbos Dab Nun Gim. We begin on the bottom of Dab Nun Beis Mebeis. Full ends up in the bottom of the Yemud. We continue with the halacha, the, the next Mishnah. Continue on this theme of the title of the Perk. But Mebehemah Yitzu. We're talking about regarding the prohibition of a behemah or someone's animal doing malacha, specifically as it relates to the laws of Haitzah. Some of this we're going to speak about in today's Daf. I share his first co-sponsor by Kalzer Chinecheskel. Torani Tam Daf Achaim. Thank you, everyone who's joining us on Zoom. Is when may an animal go out with its saddle cloth? And that is an animal generally wears a cloth to keep it warm. When may it go out, again, as a, as a potential problem of hoitza, of carrying? Additionally, whether a saddle cloth, a saddle, and a feeding bag, and these are different terms we're going to speak on today's stuff, may be put on in a chatzar, on, on, on Shabbos, even in the courtyard, not going out to a shusarab. Additionally, does the issa to do medical treatments apply to animals as well? We know one's not supposed to do in general, unless it's a danger to a person's life, medical treatments, some type of medicine. How, does that apply to animals as well? Two remarkable stories about men whose wives died, as it relates to today's daf. Additionally, the, we're going to end off the daf with that rams go out levuvin. That's one that Allah has mentioned in the Mishnah. And three possible definitions of what does levuvin mean, that we say that's how the rams go out. Some important terms and concepts we're going to discuss in today's daf is tirchi yaseira. It's forbidden to do an excessive amount of effort, even if it's not an actual malacha for an animal. And additionally, Taisa says uh, elsewhere that you're not supposed to do a tirchi yaseira on Shabbos. Tainik ba'alma, and that is if let's say what you're doing for the animal is just for its pleasure, not for any pain, that we're going to find as a machlek is the one's permitted to do on Shabbos for an animal. Tzar that, uh, that that everyone's going to agree that if it's pain for the animal, one's allowed to do an activity for an animal. And then regarding different ideas of a kameyas, that's an amulet that uh, as relates to the laws of an animal and going out into the Rosh and additionally, that's done for a nine herod to protect it from the evil eye. And finally, although generally one's not allowed to do medicine on Shabbos because of a concern that, as in Talmudic times, you might come to take the, herb, the original herbs and grind it on Shabbos, which is forbidden to do as a malachas teichen. We'll see if that relates to an animal or not. So we begin the current daf. As we said, uh, it starts on the daf and beis and beis. Four lines up at the bottom of the yamin where the Mishnah continues the theme of this paragraph, with what can an animal go out? Because that, the theme is, you're allowed to go out with your clothing. It's not considered you're carrying your clothing. It's considered a malbush, or you're allowed to wear your glasses. It, certain things are considered taksha, like women are allowed to wear, uh, uh, really, according to basic Allah, wear their jewelry. There's, there's different things that come up, but a masa, to carry something, that you're not allowed to. So that's what we're qualifying, as in the previous Mishnah, what's considered the norm for an animal to protect it, those are things that are permitted and things then that are not, or can say that masa are forbidden. So says the mission like this, Chamor yitzah b'mardas, and the animal could go out with the saddle cloth, which is left on the donkey the whole day to warm it up. Because the Gemara is going to quote a, 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 a phrase, a, a donkey, even in the summer months, is cold. So it always wears this saddle cloth. So therefore it could go out with a saddle cloth that's considered a, a way of keeping it warm, just like you wear a, a shirt, the donkey wears a saddle cloth. But the Mishnah makes a qualification that it's manchik shurbay. As the Gemara is going to explain what this means, as long as it's tied on to the animal, then it's okay, then you could go out like that. That's one halacha. Next halacha, the Mishnah says, Zacharim, the males, which refers to an isle, an isle is a male lamb, that's what a, 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 a ram is. So they're yitz and levuvin. They could go out levuvin, and the Gemara is going to explain what all these terminologies, levuvin, shechudzes, kavulis, kavunis, the Gemara is going to explain what this means, and this actually these are the lines that said our daf is only going to do this. The, the rest of the Mishnah is going to be discussed on the next daf. But uh, the rams, they go out levuvin. Recheilois, the, the female lambs, which is called a yu, a kivsa, they yitzah shchuzis, they could go out shchuzis, kavulis, u kavunis. We'll explain the what those terminologies mean, but that's to say the rams could go out levuvin. The, the, the female, the, the lambs, the sheep, they could go out with shchuzis, kavulis, and kavunis. Now, Ha'izim, the goat, a goat is different than a ram, goats are yaitzis, they go out with their udders, tzururites, the udder is where the milk comes out of the goat, they go out with it uh, tightly wrapped. Now, sometimes they do it to dry up the goat, because they want to do it very tight so that it should not lactate, they shouldn't have milk anymore. Why would they want to do that? It's because they want that the animal sh- they should become pregnant. And it, if, it's, if it's lactating, if it's milking, as, as a woman knows regarding nursing, then she doesn't become pregnant, so too by the goats. So sometimes they'll have it tight around the udders because they want it to stop producing milk, or actually because they want it to be fat. That's always a trade-off. Some of the fat comes through the woman knows when she gave birth, she loses a lot of weight when she nurses. Same idea with the animal. Oh, and sometimes they actually want it for the milk. In other words, 
to protect the milk that it shouldn't drip down to the ground. So therefore they tie like a type of a pouch to the udders. So those are different reasons why they would go ahead and tie a pouch by the udders. So the Tanakhama says, yes, the goats could go out with their udders wrapped. And that's not considered a masa. It's considered the normal way for the animal to go out. And Yesi Isa Bakul, and the reason is no, all the cases just described by the Tanakhama, they're all a masa. They're all uh, carrying things that are not considered in, in, in endemic to the, to the animal. It's considered a masa load. The one exception is that he holds is regarding the ewe, again, the ewe is the female sheep, that goes out fastened, which is, as we'll explain in the Gemara, when you have, like, basically, it was all surrounded with a, 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 a covering, like a tarp of something that was clicked on to cover the animal's wool from the day that it's born, that it shouldn't get dirty, and therefore he holds it, that's considered a toxin. That's considered an, an, an adornment of the animal because it's protecting its, its wool, and therefore that would be considered as a, as a, as a toxin, as an adornment, and not considered as a masa. The third opinion mentioned in the Mishnah, Bihudo, I mean, he says, Ezim goats, he says, yes, Yates is true, so it could go out with its udders bundled together, which is, as Rashi says, Rabbi Huda holds like the Tanikama, which having that, that, that pouch is, is not considered a masa, but he's somewhere in the middle. He says it's only liyavish. It's only if the reason why you're having the pouch on the udders wrapped together is because you want to dry up the milk supply. As Rash explains, so what's the relevancy? Who cares what it's for? Because then you do it very tight. Because the whole point is to, to keep the, to push back the udders and it tightens it and doesn't allow, allow the, the, the release of the, of the milk. So then we're not concerned that maybe that pouch is going to fall and going to come to carry a dollar because it's so tight on the, on the, on the goat. Avaloy l'chalof. But you can't have the pouch that's there to receive the milk because then it's not so tight. Because if you would put it tight, it would, it would, it would stunt the producing of the milk so you have it a little bit looser. Problem is, if it's loose, you will consider it might fall off. It might fall off. And this actually, we'll see this a lot in the next parak, and that if in this parak too, and even though in this daf, that when it's loose, it might come to fall off because it's not so tight. And if it comes to fall off, you might come to carry it. And that's the point. You might come to carry dollars and shuts the So therefore, that's the, 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 he says that, yes, I like the Tanakama. You could do it bundled, but only if it's to make it dry, very tight, but not if it's there to get the milk. Like we said in Tanakama, he holds either one is okay. Rabbi Yisrael says, neither one is okay. And Rabbi someone in the middle. He says, the goats could go out through is if it's Liavich, because it's very tight, it's not going to fall, but not Lechal when it's not so tight. Now we continue to talk about the Gilman Explaining the opening halacha of the Mishnah regarding, like we said, the Mardas, the animal could go with the saddle cloth on Shabbos as long as it's tied on to the animal. So Amr Shmuel qualifies this teaching. Shabbos. This is specifically, and this is one of these interesting halachas, of, as we'll see in the Rishon, it's not so clear in what the halacha is, that it's only if it was tied on from before Shabbos. So if it was tied on from before Shabbos, then it could go out into Rishon Sarabim like this, but if not, not. What's the understanding? So Tesis brings from Rashi later on, if it was tied on from before Shabbos, it's considered clothing of the donkey. If it's not tied on from before Shabbos, then it's obviously not one of his clothing, and it's considered a masri as a load. That's what, how Tesis quotes from Rashi. Tesis gives another, another interpretation. He says, no. If it's not tied on from before Shabbos, so it looks like that your intention is to transport the saddlecloth. Because it's obviously not the donkeys. You're putting it on now, aha, uh-huh, on Shabbos, because you really want to transport it. So it looks like you're trying to do so. A third interpretation Tesis brings, that if you're putting it on on Shabbos, it looks like you want to take the animal very far distance. And what's the problem with that? Either out of its home, or you're going to go to do some type of sale, or something. It looks like you want to do something forbidden, because what are you doing? Why are you putting it on now suddenly? So again, it's not so clear in the Rishayim. I mean, this is Machlekes. Rishayim says, what is this prohibition? But that's what Shmuel says. He says, it's only if it was tied on from before Shabbos. If not, then like one of the Rishayim's interpretation, then you're going to have a, a different problem that's going to happen if it wasn't tied on from before Shabbos. Amr of Nachman, he says, Masnitin, a Mishnah later on the parak, Nami Daika, is also precise like the way Shmuel qualified, that it's specifically when we said it has to be tied on, has to be tied on from before Shabbos. Because the Ketanik will learn the Mishnah on the next daf, on the Ndalim and Beis, that says, Enachamar Yoytze B'mardah, so over our Mishnah is saying what, it, uh, what animals could go out with. Next Mishnah starts going, B'mamahim E'en Yoytze, what an animal cannot go out with. So he say, A donkey, Enachamar Yoytze B'mardah, a donkey cannot go out with a saddle cloth, B'zman She'en Kishur Lai. If it's not tied onto it, then it can't go out. So it says the Gemara Hechadami. What's the case of that next mission they're talking about? If you think to say that it's not tied on at all, and that's what the mission is coming to tell me, if it's not tied on at all, oh, then you can't go out. Obviously, if it wouldn't be tied on at all, then you can't go out with the animal to Rishon 
And this, like we said, that we, this is a big concept that we find many times in these halachas with an animal, with a woman, is Dilma Nafile, or man even, maybe it's going to fall off. It's not tied on at all. The saddle cloth can fall off very easy. The Asla too, you look at this beautiful saddle cloth, colored and expensive garment. It, it might, uh, you might come to carry down on Mishra's Ram. Of course you can't go if it's not tied on at all. El Alav, isn't it obvious? What's the concept of the next mission over there? It's telling you when it says it wasn't tied on, Shinik Shumi Erev Shabbos. Because obviously, if it wasn't tied at all, you can't go out. It must be telling you that if it wasn't tied from before Shabbos. Machal Duration, the inference is that our Mishnah, when it says that you could go out if it was tied on, it must mean Shik Shur Lame Erev Shabbos. Obviously, means that it was tied on from before Shabbos. Shema Minah, so we could obviously infer from that next Mishnah that when it says you can't go out when it wasn't tied on, which again means it wasn't tied on from before Shabbos, our Mishnah says you could go out, it means to say that it was tied on from before Shabbos, which Tyson points out if anyone is thinking, really, you could really make that inference from our Mishnah already. Which is saying Bismarck Kashurli. The inference is when it's not, then you can't. So then ask, what would that mean? But Taisa says that many times we find the Mishnahis that they do such a thing. So therefore, uh, either way, from that Mishnah, from our Mishnah, you could see that it's obviously that it, it, when we say it's, if it was tied on, it means it's tied on from before Shabbos. And Tana Machi says the Gemara, similar in the Brisa. Chamar Yitzhak Bimar Das. A donkey go out with a saddle cloth. Bismarck Kashurli, Mayab Shabbos, the Brisa clearly says, as Shmuel qualified the Allah of Mishnah, that it could go out if it was tied on from before Shabbos. Now, another halacha, which is also halacha lemaisim, b'leibu ukuf, a donkey cannot go out with a saddle, alpha pishik shur lemi erev Shabbos. Even though it was tied on from before Shabbos, it cannot go out with the saddle. Why not? So as the Mepharshim explained, that's because it's a masli. A saddle cloth is considered uh, in, uh, integral, as we're going to explain this shortly for the animal. It keeps it warm. But, uh, but, uh, but the saddle is not necessary. It's not something that you're going to be doing. You're not riding on an animal anyway. It's forbidden to. So therefore, it's considered as a masli, as a load. Shimon Lilema, he disagrees. He says, no, af ba'ukif. He says, even a saddle, which also, as Rashi explains, does warm the animal. So therefore, it, it, it's not considered as a masay, as a load, because it's, it's helping the animal. Bizman shik shur, lemeyav Shabbos. It was tied on from before Shabbos. Yeah, it can't be done on Shabbos, like we said by the saddle cloth. But if the saddle was tied on from before Shabbos, then it's also going to be okay for the animal to go out with it to Rosh Hashanah. Obavad, he says, at, at least the following two ideas, but so when, one, when the animal wears the uh, the saddle, so then there's uh, the, the saddle has you can't just put a saddle on top of an animal. You have to have two different straps, oftentimes one by the head part, one by the tail part, and that's what he says. Although he says you're allowed to put on the saddle if it was tied on from before Shabbos, but as long as you don't put on these breast straps, which that 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 looks like I mean. It, it, it looks like that as if you want to load up the animal with a, with a heavy load because when you, when you make these excessive straps, it looks like that there's going to be some real carrying here. Now, that's problematic. If it looks like you're putting on the load, it looks like you're doing something wrong because you're not allowed to carry a load in Rosh Hashanah on Shabbos. So, therefore, you can't put on the breast straps. And as long as you don't put a strap by its tail. So, Rash explains that these two straps, this last one of the, uh, the, by the tail, is that when the animal is going down into a valley, so what happens is you put a strap by, by the tail so that the, 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 the saddle should not move forward and go down on the head of the donkey. So to the first one of the masrich, and the masrich is let's say when the animal is going up a hill. So you have the strap by the, by the head, by the breast, that it shouldn't go fall back onto the tail. So that's why you have these two straps that oftentimes are put when it's carrying a heavy load and you're going to be going down a hill or up a hill where it either might fall down on the head or might fall down onto the tail. So you have the strap by the head that it shouldn't fall down on the tail or you have the, the strap by the tail that it shouldn't fall down on the head. Those are the special type of straps when you're carrying a load. That you can't do on Shabbos because that's going to look like you're carrying a load and that's forbidden to be done on Shabbos. So the Gemara continues now on the halacha of Mardas, of a saddle cloth. But even the Ravas Bar Nasan, he asked Mirbhi Bar Ravashi, says, Mao Litan Mardas, Agabi Khamar Bishabas. What's Allah about putting a saddle cloth on a donkey on Shabbos? Which, as Rashi explains, it's not about going out to a Shusarab, because that we said that has to be tied on from before Shabbos. So if it's not on, obviously you can't put it on now because you can't tie it on Shabbos, and it wasn't tied on from before Shabbos. Rather, as Rashi explains, the question is regarding in a courtyard, in a private domain. Now, why are you putting a saddle cloth? And what's the question? You're not putting it on to go out with. You're putting it on just to keep it, to keep it warm because of the cold. Now, what's the Gemara's question? Here, too, it's not so simple. 
Tasis goes through, and it's important. It's just interesting to see the different ideas that Tasis addresses, and these are many of the ideas we spoke about in these parakim. He says, well, "So what's the question? What is the question about putting on the saddle cloth on the animal in Rosh Hashanah in, 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 in the Chatzim, not going out to Rosh Hashanah?" So it's not about Hitzo. So he says, it's not because of, a, of that you would think that about taking what's called Klihanito. We spoke about this at length regarding Mukta. Oh, maybe I'm not going to move this, which is allowed to be moved, for something that cannot be moved. We spoke about it at length regarding the concept of the Mukta. You can only take the Dover Hanito, because Tesis says, no, an animal is considered Dover Hanito. Ah, you're not allowed to ride an animal. That's okay. You can still pull an animal and take it wherever you want, or as our, as our parents are talking about, into a Shasrab. So then Tais says, so what's Rabbi Sebar Nassim's question if it's forbidden? He says, don't say it's because it looks like he wants to take his animal to a far place, because if that would be the case, then as we're going to shortly see, how could the Gemara have been medayik, that according to the one that allows the, the feeding basket that we had in the picture in the introduction, say that for sure he's going to allow the saddle cloth, because the saddle cloth is for tzara and, and the basket's not for tzara, but what do you mean? If you're telling me the problem with the saddle cloth is because it looks like you want to take it for a place, then actually it might be more stringent than the feeding basket. So that can't be the reason. And Tosh says also, don't say the reason is because he wants to say it's forbidden to put in the court shot because he might come to do it when it goes into Rosh Hashanah because as Tosh proves, although we have such a concern by a woman, as the Gemara says later on, that's not the Beis, by now we don't make such a gezera, as the Gemara is going to bring shortly regarding the bell, that although you're not like, the animal's not walk with a bell in Rosh Hashanah, it's allowed to walk in the Chatzah. So, so what is this question of the Gemara? So Tosh says, from the Re, the reason is because of Tircha B'Shabbos. That's the question. Are you allowed to go through a Tircha for an animal? It's not necessary for the animal. If it was necessary, so fine. But it, since it's not necessary, so that was the question, are you allowed to put the saddle cloth on the animal? No problem to moktsu, no problem to malacha. It's what's called tircha, uh, unnecessary effort. That was the question, if you're allowed to put the saddle cloth on the donkey. So i mutter. So Rebchir bar Rabashi answered, it says permitted. You're allowed to put the saddle cloth on the donkey on Shabbos. So on that, Omalei said to him, what, I don't understand. What's the difference between putting the saddle cloth on the animal in, in a courtyard, in your own yard? You have your little b- pony uh, place where you have donkeys and whatever, and you want to put the saddle cloth, your ladu. Why is it different than the saddle, the ukiv, the saddle itself, you now put on on Shabbos? What's the difference? So Ishtak, he was silent. So Ace, he asked him the following verse, as Rashi explains, uh, so Ravasi by Nassim thought that why was he silent? Because he wasn't paying attention to him. Because he didn't even hold to the question. Because he held that actually a saddle you allowed to put on a Shabbos, not just the saddle cloth. That's what's coming to Asma Brisa, that you see it's forbidden to take off the saddle on Shabbos. And, and if you see that you're not allowed to take it off, for sure you're not allowed to put it on. And moreover is that it, when you, a saddle is more severe than a saddle cloth, because it looks like you want, I mean, and to put it on, because it looks like you want to load up a load. So therefore he asked him the following Brisa, because he thought he wasn't answering, because, yeah, as if like he held the saddle is also okay. It says, I, it says in the Braisa, Ukiv shal gabi a saddle on a donkey. Lo yitalt to lend the bayadi. Now let her carry it with your hands. And I'll take off this saddle with your hands. So, Ella, what do you do? Let's you want to get the saddle off. What you do is you have the animal walk back and forth in the courtyard. With knife and mail, it's going to fall down by itself. So, on that, he asked him, Hashta, if now you see in the Braisa, little amrit loy. The Braisa is telling you, now let even take off the saddle. To go and put on, like we said from Rashi, because it like, looks like you're putting on a load, and for sure you're not allowed to put it on. So therefore, if the saddle is forbidden to be put on, why is it different by the Mardas? Why is saddle cloth do you say you're allowed to put on? What's the difference between a saddle or a saddle cloth? So Amalir Rebzir, Rebzir said to him, Shavke, leave alone, Rebchir Barashi, because Karabe, like his teacher, Rav Svirle, he holds. What, what is that? Because the Amr of Chiyah Bar Ashi, Amr Rav, as we see, he explicitly quotes a teaching in the name of Rav. Toilin Traskel, a person is allowed to hang on a feeding bag, which is a basket full with barley that the donkey eats, lebehema for the animal that you hang it on its neck, and its mouth is inside the bag, b'shabes on Shabbos, and it eats from the bag, which is really what's called Heinig, it's just giving you pleasure, just that it shouldn't have to go through the effort to bend down its neck to the ground. It's permitted, Rav says, to do that on Shabbos. So on that, says the Gemara, so that's what he answers him. He says, He says, don't ask him regarding that he allows putting the saddle cloth on, on the animal on Shabbos, because it's a Kavachimer. Umahasim, if the feeding basket, his Rebbe said, Rav, that, which is only the Mishnah Tanya, it's just for pleasure. Shari, allowed to go through the effort to do that for the donkey. So hach over here, by the saddle cloth, the Mishum Tsar, where it alleviates the Tsar of the animal because it's cold. 
So, of course, like Koshkin, isn't a Koshkin that Bishri is going to hold that it's permitted to put on the saddle cloth on the animal? Because if even Tainig is per- permitted for short tzar. Now, Shmuel Amr, he, he disagrees. He says, yes, Mardaz Mutter, he agrees to this halacha that you're allowed to put the saddle cloth on Shabbos because that's considered pain for the animal and therefore it's considered normal and it's not considered a load. But Traskal also, he says, but regarding the feeding basket, he says, no, that's forbidden. Because you're right, like we said, that's just, that's just giving pleasure, and that would be considered an unnecessary load. And therefore, you're not allowed to go out, you're not allowed to go ahead and, and go out with it. It's different discussions in the Rishonim, but you're not allowed to go ahead and do the effort and put it on because that's not considered necessary for the animal. Now, actually, the Gemara brings a story related to this machlekis, Amayram, Rab, and Shmuel. The Azal Reb Chibar Yesav, Chibar Yesav went, and Amr Lushmaite the Rab. He said over this teaching of Rab that he says that you even allowed to go ahead and put on the feeding basket on the animal on Shabbos. He said it kamei Shmuel in front of Shmuel. On that Amalei, on that Shmuel said to him, This is what Abba referring to Rab, which Rashi here translates, it means my friend. If this is what he says, that you're allowed to even put up the feeding basket, that means to say that he doesn't know anything regarding the laws of Shabbos at all, because that's not permitted to be done. It's only permitted to be doing something that's the tsar for the animal, which is by the saddle cloth, but regarding the putting on the feeding basket, that's an unnecessary tircha, and that would be forbidden to be done on Shabbos. Now, the Gemara doesn't finish with this machlekes. Kisol Rebbe when Rebbe went up to Eretz Yisrael, Ash Kichel Rebbe Yom and Bayefes, he encountered Rebbe Yom and Bayefes, the Yosef of Kama Lebesh Meid Rebbe Yechonah. He was sitting and saying over a teaching name of Rebbe Yechonah. What was the teaching? He said, Nois Nind Mardas, I got Bechem Rebbe Shabbos. He allowed to put a saddle cloth on a donkey on Shabbos. So he was saying over this halacha, that first one. Avad Omalei, Rebbe Zeir said to him, Yishar. You should be strengthened. Like, that's the terminology, Yasha Kayach, Yasha Kechacha, which, well done. B'chein Tirgema Aryech Bebabel. So to Aryech, translated the same way in Babel. So it's going Aryech Manu. Who's Aryech? That's Shmuel. Because Shmuel, is, why was Shmuel called Aryech? Because he was very proficient in law, and he judged like a king who judges the whole earth, which is the terminology, Aryech is from the word Reicha, which means Melech, as the Gemara says, in Babas and Abdalim and Alf. Or Tais actually says, no, Aryech is the name of an actual king. Whoever knows Chumash, Bereish Yadal, Aryech Melech Elasser. And why are we, why we picking Aryech, which is from all the kings mentioned over there, is because in the name Aryech is the word Ari, which is a lion. So they wanted to, that's why they used to call Shmuel Aryech. But be that as it may, he says, oh, Shmuel said the same thing. He says, Shmuel? What do you mean? But Rab Nami Yomer. Rab also said, because Rab said not only that, he said he allowed to even put on the, the feeding basket, for sure he would hold the saddle that permitted. Why saying only Shmuel? Uh, says Gemara, well, the story didn't finish. He heard him finish. He says, yes, you're allowed to put on the saddle cloth, but, he says, but you're not allowed to hang up the feeding basket on Shabbos, which that's not like Rav. Yes, he holds like Shmuel, which is, this is Tsar, that you're allowed to do, but this is forbidden, because that's just tiny bama for the animal. On that, that he says, well done, and the Tigrim Arich with Bubble, so to Arich, like, rude like this in Bubble, which, which Tais is bothered that why, why is our Gemara ruling like Shmuel, if generally regarding Isuri prohibitory law, which is one of these Shah's concepts, we generally rule like Rav. So this is also a very important concept that comes up often in Shah's, is that's only when you have a Machlik is Rav and Shmuel. But here, Rabbi Yechanan held like Shmuel, in contrast to Rav, we then rule like Rabbi Yechanan versus Rav. And so Tertesa says, anyways, through this sugi, we find that the Brisa regarding the saddle is like Shmuel, according to what the Gemara is going to answer, that Kan Lachamo, Kan Latzano, we're going to find throughout the sugi that there's many proofs from the Bryces that they hold like Shmuel, that only for Tsar you're allowed to do an activity, but for Tani Ba'am of the animal, you're not allowed to do, and therefore that's how he's ruling. He says, like Rabbi Yechanan, like Shmuel, that yes, for Tsar is permitted, but for just Tani Ba'am of the basket, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of uh, that's the feeding bag, that would be forbidden to be done on Shabbos for an animal. Now the Gemara concludes, which it was still a question we didn't answer yet, the Kul Amamias, but according to everyone, Mardas Mutu, we said, Shmuel, Rab, Rabbi Yechon, everyone agrees, you're allowed to put on the saddle cloth on the animal on Shabbos, because it's tsar for the animal. And that says the Gemara, Maish Nome Ukif, why is it any different than the saddle, which you're not allowed to take off, and for sure you're not allowed to put on, what? What's the difference between the saddle or the saddle cloth? So that says the Gemara, Shani Hasam, over there it's different, and, and, and that's specifically regarding the saddle taking off, because the F should enough of the Mela. Because the saddle might fall off by itself. Like the Bryce says, you could go back and forth with, it with the court and it could fall off by itself. And therefore, it would be a Tirchi Yaser to take it. So actually, maybe you might be able to put it on. Because it does warm up the animal. But what the Bryce is saying is, you're not allowed to take it off. Why not take it off? 
Uh, if it's pain for the animal, yes, but it could, because you don't have to. If you don't have to do a tircha, therefore, it could fall off by itself. That's why, that's one interpretation why it would be forbidden to take it off. Or Rav Papa may give us a second interpretation. He says, Khan, over here, he says that by the saddle cloth, why do you need it? You need it l'chama, to warm up the animal. Therefore, it's permitted because, like we were explaining up until now, that everyone agrees, not only Rav, but even Shmuel, Nebuchadnezzar, because of the pain of being cold. The animal is cold. So that you're allowed to do for Tzar by Lechaim. You're allowed to go ahead and do an activity for the animal on Shabbos. But Khan, by taking off the saddle, that's only Litzanana. That's only to cool down the animal because it got hot by carrying the load that it was carrying from before Shabbos. And if you don't take off the saddle, that doesn't bother us because anyways, the animal is going to cool down by itself. Why? As Igmar explains. When, if it's to, to heat it up to put on the saddle cloth, so it has pain. Therefore, it's, forbi- it's permitted to do something for the animal for, for pain. But but to cool it down, to get off the saddle, to take it off, why are you taking it off? Because it's so hot from the load that was carrying, you just want it to cool down. That's not something necessary to be done on Shabbos. Because it doesn't have pain. Why doesn't it have pain? Says the Gemara, behind the Dami this is what people say. That Chamra, Afila, but Kubas, Thomas, a donkey, even in the summer months, in Thomas time, Kiririla, it's always cold. The animal, even though it's hot for those few moments, it's going to get cold, and therefore that's an unnecessary thing. And that's why, the Papa says, that's why it would be uh, forbidden to take off from the animal because of, uh, and as Tais explains, this is going like, like that of, of Shmuel, which is for Tainik Be'alma, that's forbidden, but for Tsar, yes, to, to put on the saddle, because the Tsar is permitted. But taking off the saddle, uh, which is, is, is just a little bit pleasure, that would be forbidden to be done on Shabbos. Now the Gemara continues and says, Mesvi. The Gemara asks from the following b'risa on Shmuel, who he says that for timing be'alma, for just pleasure, and it's a lengthy b'risa, but it, the, the main point is going to be, we'll explain at the end, and then we'll explain some of these uh, phrases in this b'risa on Ahmed Beis. But one of the halachas are going to be difficult on Shmuel. We have, again, this machlik is Rav and Shmuel. Rav says, you allowed to do for the animal on Shabbos. Again, no malacha being done. But it's just a tircha, it's, it's exertion. So for tsar, everyone agrees you're allowed to do, which is the mardas, the, the saddle cloth you're allowed to put on. But for tiny biyama, just for pleasure, so that's a machlech gets Rabbi and Shmuel. Rabbi says, yeah, you're allowed to do things for pleasure for the animal. You're allowed to put on the feeding basket. Shmuel says not. And as we have this last price that seems to say like Shmuel, that no, if it's just for pleasure, you're not allowed to do it. But if it's for tsar, then you're allowed to do it. So on that, the Gemara asks uh, from the following price on Shmuel. The price says, lo yitzi hasus. A horse is not allowed to go out. In Rishus Rabbim, biznav shul, with the tail of a fox that they hang between the eyes of the horse, so that the ayin hara, that no eyes should 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 take. It's like a way of warding off the evil eye. That you had this uh, the, the the fox the fox tail. Also below bizaruris, not with a red strip for beautification. Shabin ain't between its eyes. It just looks beautiful between the horse's eyes. That's forbidden because that's a masa. Lo yitzeh hazav bekishalay. Uh, the, the Zav, who's a man who had a certain type of, uh, of a discharge from his male member, is not allowed to go out with a pouch by the male member that they would hang from, from the male member. And the reason why they would do that is to, to receive the Zav, the, the Ziva discharge. And why would they do that? Because they wanted to check how many discharges he had, which that's important for the Allah of being a Zav. If you see two times, then you tell me for se- one time is also for that night, two times for seven days, three times is then you have to bring a carbon. Now, again, here also it's not a takshit, it's not a, an ornament. It's not a garment, and therefore that would be considered as a masa, as caring. So to below ezin bekishab adadayim, the goats are not allowed to go out with the pouch on their udders to accept the milk that's dripping, or it could be the reason why they have these pouches on the udders is that they don't want that the udders, which are hanging down from the animal, to scrape on the thorns on beneath the animals because their their udders were very large. Again, these are not considered as a malbush; they're not considered. Uh, as a as a as a tachshid, therefore these are considered a masa. They're carrying it's carrying the milk. So to v'lo parish bechasim shvepia, a cow is not to go out with a muzzle on its mouth. What they used to do is they would muzzle an animal. They shouldn't graze on other fields. When they get to the place where they were going out to pasture, then they would take it off from them. Again, that's not considered as any uh, pr- uh, protection for the animal per se. Therefore, that would be considered as a masa. So to v'lo siachim, and and this is going to be the halacha we're going to ask on Shmuel from. And neither a cult, which is a young donkey, cannot go out with traskalm shabafim. It can't go out with the feeding baskets in its mouth. The rishus ram to rishus ram, and the brisa continues. We'll get back to this. Neither could an animal go out with the, the shoes on its feet, which they, 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 they make shoes of metal. That's the horseshoes that it shouldn't get hurt from the stones. That's not considered 
intrinsic and, and, and necessary for the animal, and therefore, again, that's a masa, it's forbidden to go out with that in Trisha's realm. But let be Kamea, and neither could go out with an amulet, which is a type of a writing that's for the healing of a sickness, even though it's a professional one, meaning it already healed three times, it can, it's considered hitza, you're not allowed to go out carrying that on Shabbos as an animal. And says the Bryce, this is stringency that an animal has that a person doesn't have, which at this point, the Gemara originally assumes that's going on this last halacha of the amulet. So later on, the Pergbama Isha Yitzan Dafsa Mechal Manal tells us that a person go out with, it could go out with an amulet that's a professional because that's considered like something that's protecting the person as part of like his, his garments. And he was saying that no, but the animal cannot go out with that. That seems to be strange to an animal over a person. Now Rashi explains all these halachas that the bright says Lay Seitz, you cannot go out with to Rosh Hashanah is because it's not protecting its body and therefore it's considered as a masri, as a load. Now, one of the halachas is that of an animal wearing a sandal, it does protect the animal. So why can't the animal go out with the horseshoes? That's for a different reason. Because, as we said many times, we'll find this concept in the laws of Aitzah and these parakim, it's because it might fall off, and you might come to carry it, because horseshoes are, 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 are a precious item, and you might come to carry it. And that's why it can't go out with it, even though it does protect the animal, but that can't go out. Now, avol, but now, now we're saying what it could go out with. Avol yeitzuhu be'eget shalgavi make. It could go out with a bandage on its wound, because... Here, even if the bandage falls off, you're not going to come to carry it. It's just a bandage, so it could go out with that. Ubi kashish and shalgabi yeshev, it could go out with a, a, the, um, a splint by a, bre- by a break, meaning an animal that broke a bone. So you make boards on either side, and you tie it on over there, and that keeps the bone in place, that it shouldn't move in either direction until it heals, which would be essentially like a cast. It could go out with interishas rab. Ubi shilya, and... When it's placenta, which is the thing that holds the, 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 the baby in the animal, when, when some of that came out, it, it could go out with that, with that uh, placenta, hamadudelis, but that's dangling. So though it's, so to speak, carrying it, it could go out with that too. You could also close up the bell, that's, you could stuff up the bell that's on the neck of the animal, meaning why we're talking about stuffing up the, the, the bell is because if the bell is not stuffed up, then even the courtyard, the animal's not allowed to go out with. And the reason for that is because in the bell, there's the piece that bangs inside and it makes noise. And that's forbidden to be done. So therefore, what we're saying is that you close up the bell, you stuff it up with some type of a cotton or cloth that it shouldn't ring inside the bell. If you stuff it up, then it could go out, and then you could walk with it with that bell, Bechatzer, in the courtyard. Now, you cannot go out with it to Rosh Hashanah. It's like more later on, the, on the next daf, and the Dalma is going to explain, because it looks like you're going to the marketplace, because you put on a bell and you, de- you dress it up. So that you can't do. But what you could do, if you stuffed it up, then you could walk with the animal like that in the courtyard. But if you don't stuff it up, you can't even walk like that with it within the courtyard, because you're not allowed to make that noise on Shabbos. Fine, that's the price. But says the Gemara, one thing, why we introduced this b'risa was ketoni miyas, one thing we see from this b'risa, one of the halachas war, we said, and cults, which are young donkeys, cannot go up with the baskets in their mouth, with Ram. So on that says the Gemara, with Ram, who do like, what do you tell me? To with Ram, it can't go out. But in the courtyard, it could. Ah, my la. Okay, so because with Ram and courtyard have two different concepts as we were speaking about. Into Rosh Ram, that's a concern about, is that considered masa? Is that considered caring? Fine. So you said that's considered caring. It's not considered as a shmir for the animal. It's not considered a part of the clothing of the animal. So that, it can't go out to Rosh Hashanah with, with, with an, on, in their mouth. Fine. But in the courtyard, it could. Now, my lab, and this is the most question on Shmuel, isn't it talking about begadolim by large cults? What do you mean, good, and not adults, because a shalcha is a, is, a, is, a, is a baby one. But it means it's a big one, meaning that the necks are long, and they don't have any pain to bend down and eat from the ground to go ahead and have to hang on the basket because it's very easy for them to bend down. Ah, so what are you saying that in the court you allowed to go and hang it from the neck? Is the mushum tainig is just simply for, for pleasure, that they shouldn't have to go through that effort. No pain, but that they shouldn't have to go through the effort. And that's difficult. And Shmuel, Shmuel said you can't do something for an animal that's going to be just for pleasure. So as you know, as we have in the picture over here, now we're talking about biketana, we're talking about small cults, which is... Their knees are very high, but the neck is very small, as you see in the picture. And, and, and that's a Mishum Tsar. They have pain to bend down all the way to the ground and to eat because it's very hard and difficult for the animal to bend down. That, yes, says Shmuel, as we, as we infer from the halacha of the Brites, is permitted to put the, the, the feeding basket by its neck because that's for Tsar Balechaim. If it's Tsar Balechaim, says Shmuel, that I agree, you'll have to go through the Ticha, but for Tainingna. Says Gemara, Dekanami, so to precise reading, seems to indicate because the Tani, 
if you look at the Brisa, it, it's compared to Dumi de Kameya. One of the other cases that Brisa considered Dumi Beis was an amulet. Now, what's an amulet for? It's because of illness, for, 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 for pain of the animal. And Shema Minos, so therefore we see that the Brisa is not talking about cases of Tainug. It's talking about cases of, of pain of Tsar. That's permitted to be done for the animal, and therefore that's not difficult on Shmuel. You don't see that a Tainug is permitted. You see only that for Tsar it's permitted. Now, Omar the Tana of the Brisa had said, as we just mentioned, one of the things we said that the animal cannot go out with into a Shusarabim is if, let's say, an amulet is hanging from it, even though it's made by a professional, still it's not considered as a Shmira for the animal, and therefore it cannot go out in a Rab. Says the Gemara, but we learn the Mishnah regarding a person later on, which is the next parak, and of Samach Manalav, that says, a person cannot go out with an amulet he got, he went to Israel, got this amulet, he can't go out into Rosh Hashanah with that hanging. If it's she'en the mumcha, if it's not from a professional, what means to say that if it didn't work three times already, that it definitely was miraculous, then you can't go out with it. Now, the inference obviously is ha-mumcha. If this is well known that this is something that's effective, as they have these shilas oftentimes with women who wear ruby because that they shouldn't miscarry, they say that's considered well known. If it's well known, then shop or dummy. So that's going to be okay that you could go out with it to Rosh Hashanah. So if a person could go out with an amulet that's a mumcha, that's professional, that's been effective, to Rosh Hashanah, so why is an animal any different? Why are you telling me that even though it's mumcha, that an animal cannot go out with Rosh Hashanah? Why not? Why is an animal any different than a person? So you no, you're right. Here also we're talking about she'en mumcha. The animal cannot go out with it. We're talking about that it's not effective. It wasn't proven three times. So you how could you say that? Read the words of the Bryce. It says, even though it's effective, you cannot go out, the animal cannot go out with it. So says, Gemara, no. It was saying mumcha adam. When we said that it cannot go over to Kameh, that's not a mumcha, yeah, it is mumcha adam. It is shown to be effective for a person. But ve'ena mumcha behema. But it's not shown to be effective for an animal. So that's what we're saying, even though it's been shown to be uh, effective for a person, the animal cannot go out with that amulet on Shabbos because it has not shown to be effective for the animal. It says the Gemara, mumcha mumcha adam. Is that really so, so that something can be effective for a person, ve'ena mumcha behema, but it's not going to be necessarily effective as an amulet for an animal? So the Gemara, in yes, because Adam, a person, this lay mazla, he has mazl, which Rashi translates, everyone says, oh, he's got mazl, oh, I'm at mazl. What does mazl mean? So this is well known, Rashi interprets throughout Shas that it means his malach, who goes and then said, he, he's a proponent for the person. And therefore, misayele. So the amulet will help because a person has mazl with the amulet, it's going to be effective. Behemoth, the Leslie Mazla, an animal that doesn't have a special angel that's watching over and protecting the animal, not necessarily will that animal go help and help the person, and therefore, even though it is mumcha, adam, but since it's not mumcha, the behemoth, that's why the animal cannot go out with it. So the Gemara says, wait a second, Ihak, if that's the case, and you tell me, but an animal could go out with an amulet that has shown to be effective for animals, it's just because it's not effective for animals, it's only effective for people, but it's effective for animals, then my, then how do you understand the next line in the Brisa? The Brisa says, Zechayim behemoth, adam. Oh, this is a shrinity that applies to an animal versus a person. But what do you mean? A person also cannot go out to a shasaram only if it's an amulet that's been shown to be effective for people. So why is that a shrinity? We originally read, we thought, I mean, an animal cannot go out even with an effective amulet, but a person could. So that's a stringency. But if you tell me that they're really the same thing, because a person also could only go out mumchal adam, an animal could also only go out mumchal behema, so the same thing. Why is that a stringency of an animal of a person? So the Gemara mi sabrit. Now the Gemara is changing what we thought. Do you really think a kameikoi that's going in the last halach of an amulet? No, that's not a stringency because yeah, animal is the same as a person. A sandalkoi it's going on the case before that, which we said that this is stringency that by an animal, an animal cannot go out with the shoes on its feet because like we said, the horseshoes are expensive, it might fall off, it might come to carry it. Versus a person is allowed to wear shoes on his feet, and we're not concerned it's going to fall off, you're going to come to carry it. That's a stringency that we made for an animal versus a person. Now the more continues. Regarding that, we had said that everyone, Rav, Rav Huna, Rav uh, uh, and Shmuel, everyone agrees that Amar Das, to put on a, a, a saddle cloth on the animal is permitted to be done on Shabbos. Because we said, oh, because that's a Tsar Balachim, that's pain for the animal, you'll have to go through that Tirch on Shabbos. On that unilateral, unanimous opinion, every, that, 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 that it's permitted to be done by animal, on that thing, we actually ask. Tashma, we learned the Braisam, Sachin, you'll have to anoint with oil. Umafarchisin, you'll have to scrape off like a scab of a wound, la'adam for a person on Shabbos. But, ve'in sachan mefarchis in la'behemina'ala, anoint and scrape off, of course you can't do it if it's going to cause bleeding, 
But you're not allowed to anoint, uh, sometimes you have to have a woman for the mikvah, certain things like this. You're not allowed to anoint an Omar Farkas and a scrape of the for an animal. Now, my love says the Gemara, isn't it talking about the Ikamaka that even though the animal has a wound, Umishim Tsar. And, and, and there's pain for the animal, and even so you tell me for an animal, you're not allowed to do it. Now that's difficult both on Rav and Shmuel, because they all permitted to put on the saddle called because of Tsar. Yet here we see you're not allowed to do something for an animal for Tsar. Okay, so the animal's in pain. But you're not allowed to do something on Shabbos that's, that's unnecessary. So Sigma Loi, no. The Gemar Maka, it's talking about actually that the wound has already finished, it's already healed. The anointing and the scraping is a Mishum Tainik. It's only for pleasure. And that's why it's forbidden to be done for the animal on Shabbos. So on that Rashi points out, as Tais already alluded to on Alv, uh, for Rav, but however it's definitely difficult because Rav says even for Tainik you're allowed to do for the animal on Shabbos. And also Rashi points out, as Tais has said, that Bryce regarding the saddle is also difficult because the Bryce has said, as Rav Papa had translated, he says that, oh, saddle called the Alaru, because that's for Tsar. Saddle itself, that's just for pleasure. It's going to cool off anyway that you're not allowed to do. Rav holds that that you're allowed to do for pleasure. So Rav says, so Rashi says, you're right, Rav, what's called Tanahu Pollock. Rav is like on some level like a Tana. He was the last of the Tanoi and he was beginning of the Merom. Therefore, he could disagree. And you're right, although Bryce is saying not like him, he could disagree. And although, yes, the Bryce says that for pleasure you're not allowed to do it, it's not difficult on Shmuel, because it's not the Matsar, it's not the mat- that the wound is ongoing. It's already at the end of the wound. It's just for pleasure to make it more Gishmak. That's why it's, it's forbidden, but it's not difficult on Shmuel. So the Gemara says, Tashma. The Gemara then continues, that was the, that was the first b'risa regarding that. That was one difficulty which we said that that's only because time again. And then the Gemara asked from another b'risa. Tashma will the b'risa. Behema sha'achas adam. An animal that had the blood conge- congestion or congealing, so which is, is, it makes it challenging for the, for the uh, animal's health. So in mamid no'isi b'mayim So it gets heated up with the congestion of the blood. You now put it into water to cool down. But Adam Shachs the if a person has congested uh, congestion in his blood, you let it put him into cold water so that he cools down. So one thing we see from this Bryce is that even though there's pain for the animal, it's still forbidden. So again, that's difficult on everybody, because everyone agreed you let it put on the Sadakov, which is for tsar. Here we see even for tsar, you're not allowed to. Adam Mauli says, You're right. This should be a difficulty, but there's a different reason why we say it's forbidden. Really, it would be permitted because of tsar. But you now do a prohibition. Here it's a gezerah, it's a decree, because of grinding of the herbs. Meaning, this is rabbinic prohibition that the Rabbanan said when it comes to medicinal therapeutic treatments on Shabbos, that if we permit you to do refu, even though there's no isra being done, taking a talnol, but you might come to then grind, grind the herbs, which is the isra that rise up teichen, so if you now do refu on Shabbos, that's why you now put the animal into the water. You're right, because of tzar you would love to, but you now do the isra de of refu. So it's going to be, if that's the case, Adam Nami. Now, a person also, you should not be able to put him into the, if he's going to die, of course you're allowed to do, but it's just, he's going through, uh, he's in pain, but it's not, it's not what's called nafla mishkov. It's just he, as he got a headache. So you don't take a talno. So why are you allowed to put the water into the cold water, the person in the cold water? So it's gemara, adam, a person, nira can make her. And this is actually very important. Allah comes up in the laws of refuah that if it doesn't look like there's, you're allowed, there's like a head, you're allowed to put your, 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 your talno or whatever it is inside, let's say, marshmallow fluff, that it doesn't look like as if you're taking it. It was, it was hidden inside. This is an element of refuah is that it looks like you're doing refuah. By the person, it doesn't look like he's doing refuah, and that's the heter of derech bari. If you're, if you're taking, drinking a cup of tea that's good for your throat, even though you're not taking medicine for it, but if you're doing what's normal, that doesn't look like a refuah, that's permitted. So, so the person looks like he's cooling off. So therefore, hey, I got swimming. So the, and the swimming, well, you can't do it, but you're allowed to cool off. So therefore, that's why it's permitted. So if that's the case, behem and can make her. Why can't you do it for the animal? What do you mean refuah? It looks like he's cool, you're cooling off the animal. So the Gemara ain't maker la behema, meaning it's not normal to cool off an animal. So therefore, everybody knows why you're putting them into the cold water is for healing purposes. And if you're going to do refuah, then it's going to come to grinding the herbs, and therefore, you're not allowed to do it for the animal. So you're right, it's not difficult on Rav and Shmuel, and you're right, for Tsar, you're allowed to do it. But here, it's a problem about refuah, which is only by the animal, but the person wouldn't have that problem because it doesn't look like refuah by the person, but it looks like refuah by the animal. Now, says the Gemara, how do we even understand this halacha? By an animal, do we really make this gezeira of... Of, uh, 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 of, of not letting the animal go into the water when it's going to be a loss for the person, like in such a situation, if the blood's congested and you can't get, let it go into the, to the cold water, it might create a loss for the, for the owner. But Ratanya Lunar Bryce says the following halacha. 
If we're standing out of the tchum, which is a halacha that this a person is not allowed to walk, or even his animal or his objects, and I'll go more than 2,000 amas beyond his Shabbos residence. Now, if you're living by yourself, quarantined out in who knows where, and it's only your house for miles and miles, that means from your house. If it's just your body, it's just you. If it's your city, it's your city. But whatever it is, it's 2,000 amma boundary. So let's say the animal was chutz l'tchum. Now, the Gemara assumes right now that it means out of the owner's tchum. The animal was, he's allowed to walk 2,000 amas, and the animal had gone further than this tchum. He says, oh, I can't go. The tchum ends over here, and the animal is further over there. So says the Baisa, the halacha is kairila. He's allowed to call the animal, viba, and it could come. Now, says the Gemara, what do you see from this? And we don't make a decree to say that no, you're not allowed to call the animal because you might come to bring it. And if you do that, you're going to be violating the laws of Tchumen. So you see that even though there's rabbinic law over here of Tchum, but when it's a great case of loss, because if you can't call your animal, you're going to lose this animal, that we're lenient. So then why aren't we lenient over here regarding the congested animal that although there's a gazer of a but we should be lenient because it's going to be a loss for the owner of the animal. Says Amr Ravina, says, no, you, you're, you're making a wrong diuk from this b'risa. You don't see anything that you're allowed to do with Isser because of a loss for the animal. Because the case, Tomah, we're going to show you, Tchum Shalah, we're talking about where the boundary of the animal had a different boundary than the owner. How is that possible? I'll explain in a second. The boundary of the animal was was within his Shabbos boundary. Because when it says the animal was Chutz Tchum, it means beyond the animal's boundary, because the animal on that Shabbos was given over to a shepherd. So therefore, as the Gemara elsewhere explains, that the, uh, the Gemara Mbeya, the animal then has the, the halachic boundaries of where the shepherd could go on Shabbos. So here where the owner calls the animal, that actually is a place where the owner could go. For example, where his Shabbos residence was near that place. Even so, so he could go to where the animal is, but he can't bring the animal with his hands because he's going to be removing the animal from its halachic Shabbos residence, which it only has Daladamas once it leaves the Tchum. But he could call it, and it could come because he's not prescripted regarding what the animal does right or wrong, as long as he doesn't literally bring it with his hands, so therefore there's no raya. Because we're not letting him be lenient regarding the laws of his trum. It's in his trum. It's out of the animal's trum. So that he can't literally take the animal because the animal has its own trum, but he could call it, and we're not being lenient for his own trum because it's within his trum. And therefore there's no raya from there. No, yes, regarding a rabbinic decree, whether it be trum, whether it be refuah, you're not allowed to be lenient, even if it's going to be a loss for one's animal. That's one approach to answer the question. Rav Nachman Yitzchak Amar, he says that actually Shechikik Samimonim Gufa, this whole concept about the concern about refuah for an animal, because you might come to grind the herbs, actually Tanoi, it's actually Machalik is Tanoi, and there is a Tanoi opinion that says you don't make regarding uh, r- the rabbinic Isra of refuah on animals because of that you might come to grind herbs. Why not? Why animals not? Because the whole problem is that when you're in a, a state of distress of, of refuah, you might come to do a malacha to get you your medicine. So we said, no, no medicine. You're not going to come to do that. But an animal, a person is not in such distress as the place can explain to do. But the animal, they permitted actually, the halacha, to do refuah for the animal because it's not concerned you might come to do grinding of the herbs. As we find the Tanya, the Gwena Brisa. The Brisa disagrees regarding this exact halacha. Behema sha'achli karshinim. An animal that ate a lot of vetch. Now, because it ate so much, so it got sick. So now what you have to do is you have to make a diuretic and you have to have it go to the bathroom and run around, which is going to cause it to go to the bathroom. So that's what the, the Tanakhama says, Lo You're not allowed to make a run in the courtyard, because that's therapeutic. And that's a concern for all types of medicine, because of Shechik Yisaman you might come to grind herbs. And you're not, why would you have a run in the courtyard? Like Rashi says, doesn't mean a terminology of healing, it's from the word of Ripui, of that you want to loosen the, the intestines so that it should have diarrhea and it should go to the bathroom. That's forbidden to be done, because that's therapeutic for an animal. But as we rule, Rabbi Shia Matar, he says, permitted that you're allowed to do refuah for an animal Shabbos. And therefore, yes, actually, it's not difficult on Shmuel, because we actually rule that you're allowed to go ahead and put the animal into the cold water on Shabbos. Because since it's Fetzar, and there's no Gezeira of Shechikis Ammonim, of refuah of the animal Shabbos, therefore we actually disagree with that price, because we actually hold, like Rabbi Shia, the medical treatments for animals is permitted to be done on the Shabbos, and therefore that's exactly like Shmuel and Rab and all them and Rabbi Yechon held, that for tzarf and animals actually permitted to be done on Shabbos, including, yes, putting the animal into the cold water, which is a tzar for the animal on Shabbos. And Dorish Rabbi says, Allah Rabbi Allah Hafaz like this of Rabbi Yishe, and this is the Allah Lamaisa, that medical treatments are permitted for an animal on Shabbos. Now, Amama, in the town of the Bryce has said another teaching. Lo yitzeh hazav we said the zav, the man who has the ziva discharge, can't go out with his pouch. And lo yizim bekisim shabadadeim. And neither could the goats go out with the pouch on their udders. On that, the Gemara asks a contradiction. 
But by Tanya, when the Bryce says, Yaitz is easy because of the day, and that the goat could go out with the pouch on the udders. So we have a clear contradiction between two Bryce's. Could a goat go out with a pouch on the udders? Again, the udders are the, 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 the breasts of the animal hanging down on the bottom. So could you have a pouch on it or not? So we have three different approaches in the Gemara. Amr of Yehuda, he says, Look, it's not a difficulty. Ha, the Bryce says it could go out with the pouch. It's talking about Dimahadik where it's tightly fastened. So you're not concerned it's going to fall down, you're going to come to carry it. So therefore, that's when it's permitted. But when it's not tightly fastened, then it might fall off and it'll carry it. So that's where it's going to be forbidden. So that's what the two different brides are talking about. Rabbi Yisav Amma, here's the second approach. He says, He says, What, did you take away all the Tanoim from the world? As if you totally destroyed them? You can't find Tanoim that disagree about this? That you have to say that both the brides are talking about by one Tana? What do you mean, Tanoi? Says the Machlaik is Tanoim in our Mishnah. In our own Mishnah, the mayor says it's permitted, and Rabbi Yisi says Aser, which Tayyip points out, Rabbi Yehuda knew that it's Machlaik is Tanoim. He just preferred to explain both Bryce's like one Tana. But that's what Rabbi Yisif says, he disagrees. He says, What do you have to say? An interpretation, say, here it's Tama fasten, it's not fasten. It's Machlaik is Tanoim, it's not like in our Mishnah. Ha'izim, Yitzhak Sarer, is the Tana Kama that Rabbi Yisif says a goat could go out with its udders tightly fastened. Rabbi Yisif, He says it's forbidden to ever. Put it out tightly fastened. Chutz minerachelis hakavuna is unrelated, but he says except for the the you the the female sheep that could go out fastened with it to protect its wool. But but we see that some achlikes are meir and rabiyesi. And the third opinion mentioned on Mishnah, which is parenthetical for for what what we're saying now for for Rabbi Yisif, but it'll be relative to actually the next interpretation of the Gemara. But he says he differentiates. He says ezim yitzis shuris a goat could go out with it fastened uh, with it with it uh, with the with the with the pouch liyavish. If it's to dry up the milk supply, which as Rashi explains, then you do it very tight. And also it's not considered as a load because it's necessary for the animal itself because actually the lactation, the milk, actually weakens the animal. So by drying up the milk, it's actually for the animal itself. So therefore, A, it's not a load. And B, it's, 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 it's not going to fall off because you're doing it very tight. But he says you can't do it if you want the milk because then actually it's a load because what happens is that the milk is weighing down in the pouch and then it's carrying that milk on Shabbos, that's forbidden for the animal to be done. Now, that's actually Rash interpretation. But Taisa says that's difficult because then for sure that's a load. Obviously, everyone would hold it's forbidden because that's a malacha tzrich gufa. You want the milk to be carried. How could the Tanakhama say that? How could any other opinion say that, 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 that it's going to be permitted? So on that, Rav Pyrus gives a different interpretation. He says that lechalav means to say that you want to protect the milk in the udders, that you don't want the, the udders to drip down to the ground. That the Tanakh Kama says that's permitted because that's like the, the ewes which are fastened for its wool because although it's not for the animal itself really, it's just to protect the wool, that's considered as a malbush, therefore that's permitted lichalav and, 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 and liavish too because it's, it's, it's for the animal. The rig is a different interpretation. He says, no, both to dry up and to have the milk, both of them are talking about that you don't want that the udder should be scraped on the thorns beneath, as the Gemara is going to shortly explain. Now, so then what's Rabbi Huda's differentiation between liyavish or lichalav? He says liyavish, to dry it up, is when you don't want the milk. That's permitted because then you're going to put it very tight. And we don't have to be concerned it's going to fall. But lichalav is when you don't want it to dry up and, you, and, and you're not going to put it so tight. And then you could say that maybe it's going to fall and going to come to carry it. Not like Rashi said, because then you're going to be carrying the milk. Because he says, how could you have any opinion that says that's permitted? He says, no, because simply when you're doing for the milk, you're just not doing it so tight, and then it might fall, and then you might come to carry it. But be that as it may, that's Rabbi Huda's differentiation. He says, for dry, then it's permitted. But if, if it's to do it for milk, then it's forbidden. So, but one thing is that that's the second interpretation. They it's a machlik tanoim. If you want, you can say a third interpretation. That actually, Hava Har Rabbi actually, both Bryce's, as we just mentioned, could be Rabbi Huda. For Lord Kash, it's not difficult. Kam, Liyavish, the Bryce says that you're allowed to go out with the udders tightly fast and is going like Rabbi Huda, that is to dry it up, which we said then you do it very tight. So therefore, it's, it's for the animal itself, not to get weakened by the milk. And also, it's not going to fall because it's very tight. And Kam, Lechalim, and we'll say the way Rashi says, here you're doing for the milk, where you're not doing it so tight, and also that you want the milk to come out, you can be carrying it, there it's a masa. Therefore, that we could say that, or as we wrote over here, one might not tie it tight and it could fall off. That, that, so therefore you could say both brides are, are like a Yehuda, and therefore that's three different resolutions of that contradiction regarding if a goat could go out with a kiss, but that day. Now, Tanya, we learned the Brisa that just a proof from this last opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, that Amr Yehuda, he says, there was a story, Maisa Be'izim based on Tokyo, there was a story with the goats of the, the, the place of Beis Antokhya, Shoy Dadei and Gassin, that their breasts were very, the udders were very large, and they were, they, were, they were hanging down and scraping on the, on the thorns, and their udders were getting scraped up. 
the Aslan Kisan, and they made for them these, these pouches, and this is like the heter of, of liyabish, of to dry it up, which is to protect the animal, as we see Rabbi Huda holds liyabish is permitted. And why they do it? Because they shall eat through that day, and that their udder should not get scraped up, and that's the pain for the animal. That's permitted to be done for the animal on Shabbos. Therefore, again, that's what Rabbi says in this brace, just to support his interpretation that liyabish is mutter, but lechalav is going to be asr. Now, parenthetical, the Gemara brings two remarkable stories. That one, because that continues regarding the theme about the largeness of the dadin, which was what we just said regarding these goats that they have the truest liabish to that they tr- to dry it to, to pull it up that it doesn't get scraped on the on the ground. So turn on the brisa. There was a story with a person shemesa ishta that his wife passed away. Venicha ben linik and she left him a son to nurse. Now he didn't have money to pay for the wet nurse. He's a man. He, he can't nurse. He didn't have money, so the woman could nurse, but his wife passed away. And he didn't have money to pay for a wet nurse, which is to pay another woman to nurse the baby. And a miracle happened for him. And his breasts opened up, and that's what the Mepharshim explained, that really a man has breasts too, but just generally it doesn't have milk. It does have milk, but it doesn't have that type of surplu- that, that supply. His breasts opened up, like the two breasts of a woman, and he nursed his son. So again, that's the theme of like the, 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 the expansion of the breast that we had uh, of the previous, the, the, the size of the dadin. He wrote, so that's what happened for this man. So Amar Yisuf, he says, Boy, Ray, come and see. How great is this person? That a miracle happened for him, that, that, he, that, he, that he was able to nurse his children. Amar Abai, Abai said, no, Adrab, to the contrary. How inferior this person. That the acts of creation had to change by him, had to deviate. Hashem wants the world to run in a certain way. How inferior is this person? Now, more of Amr Behudi says, Boy, Ray, come and see. How difficult is a person's parnasa, is a person's food? What happened is, he didn't merit to get a parnasa. He could have just, Hashem could have just gave him money. You see how difficult it is to make a parnasa that Hashem had to change the acts of creation that he can nurse from his own breast. That, and and that's, how, see, that's how difficult it has to be about Nasser, because Rebels, he could have had money. That's, a di- that's, more, that's more difficult. As we say, it's as difficult as Kriyasi Amsa. And Omar of Nachman, he says, Teddy, you should know this idea, how difficult it is to get a Panasa, to get food, because the Misrach Nisa, we find many times from heaven, miracles happens many times to save people. That mi- it's open miracle. But believe in But you don't find, it's not so common, that suddenly food should be created in the house of a, of a righteous person that he'll find wheat growing in his storehouse. Because getting food, Mazayin is parnasa is more difficult than being saved. Saved, you'll have crazy miracles, but for food, that's again, that's more difficult than, than that. Now, a, a, rela- a similar type of a theme and related type of a story regarding a person who, whose wife passes away. So, Tamar Linda Bryce, in Maisa Badamech, there was a story with a person, She Nasa Isha Gidemis, that he married a woman that was, her hands were amputated. She was missing an arm. Well, Hikarban, the husband didn't recognize. That the wife was missing an arm, until the day that she died. First, I'm talking about why on the day of the burial did, did he recognize? Because it was saying that, that they had to ask him, should they take off the, 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 the fake arm, the, the prosthetics or not? His whole life, he didn't know when he was married, his wife was missing an arm. So Amar Rav, he says, Bayre, come and see, come and see what you should do. How modest is this woman? She was so modest that, that the husband never was able to recognize that she was missing an arm. On that, Amalei Rebchir, Rebchir said to him, no, zudark abakach. What do you mean? Every woman, first of all, is always covering herself. And for sure, this woman, who needed to, because she didn't want her husband to realize she's missing an arm. At Lekam Etznu Odom Zeh, how modest is the husband, Shlehika Be'ishli, that he didn't recognize by his wife. He doesn't look. He wasn't looking at these types of things. Like we learned in others, Al Taber Sichem Be'ishli is Be'ishli Amru, Kavachem Be'ishli Chaver. He wasn't even his own wife. And therefore, it's talking about his modesty, not necessarily her modesty. Now, the last thing we speak about here on this daf is the halacha, the mission that we said, Zcharim, the male sheep, which is the rams, Yitz and Levuvan, they could go out into Rosh Hashanah Shabbos with Levuvan. So, going, my Levuvan, what is Levuvan? So, three different interpretations. Amr um, he says that it's Tusri, it's peers, meaning that you connect them in peers two at a time, that they shouldn't run away. That's how the rams could go out on Shabbos. So, says the Gemara, my mashman hai Levuvan, lishna de krebihu. It says they go at Levuvan. Where do you see that the term Levuvan means close? Because he's saying you're putting one close to the other. Where do you see that Levuvan means close? Which makes them into peers. This is the passage in Shir Hashim. This is the love uh, uh, song with Hashem to the Jewish people. Lebavtani, you captured my heart. Achaisikala, my sister, the bride. Which 
uh, Hashem is saying that you made me close to you because the beauty of your actions. So you see, levuvin, lev, is from that of being close to someone else. And therefore, when we say the goats could go out, levuvin, that means to say that they go out with two, three, with peers. A second interpretation of Ulamay says it's Urusha Kirshlam Keneged Liba. It's a, a piece of leather, a hide, that they, uh, that they tie on opposite the hearts of the goat, of the, of the, of the rams. Yiplu Alem Ze'evim. That the, that the wolves should not pounce on them because the, norm, the way the, the wolves do is that they grab onto the heart. You kill, you go straight for the, for the gut, they go straight for the heart, then you rip out the heart, and then you kill that, that, that animal. So therefore, what they would do is they would have the rams go out with something, uh, a piece of leather opposite the heart that the wolf can't grab it over there and that they could go out like that on Shabbos and because that's protecting for the animal. Now, says the Gemara, I don't understand. Ze'ev mascharm nafli, what wolves only attack the males on the cave of Slay You're saying this is how the scharm, the rams go out. What, the, the lambs are used, they don't need that? They don't, they don't pounce on the females? I says the no, mishum demaski berish edra, because the males, they're always the alpha male. They go out in the front, in the front of the flock. So in the front, that's where the wolf attacks. Says the Gemara, ze'ev berish edra nafli, where you think wolves only attack the top of the flock. Besayif edra lay nafli, they don't get at the end of the flock where the females are. So Ella rather says the Gemara, no, mishum deshamni, because the rams are, they're the fatty ones. And therefore, they have to protect them. Says the Gemara, the cave is like a shamni, what, the females, there's no fatty, fatty sheep? And the sum moreover, miyadi ben han you think the, the, the wolf knows how to differentiate? I don't understand. Why are you saying only the zechar ma yitzin levuvin if it means to protect them by the heart? So says the Gemara, no, ela mishum, the reason is because the zak vichot mayu. This, you know, they have the, the up, nose up in the ear. This is where the term is, it says in the Gemara. The zak vichot mayu, the noses are up in the ear of these rams. Umaski kidavu, and they're walking around, looking around this way and that way. So therefore the wolves are, 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 are envious of the, of the rams because they think that they want to take them on. They're walking in like this. That's how a ram is walking around with nose up in the ear, looking around like that. So the, 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 the wolf feels intimidated. So if he's going to go and attack specifically the ram, that was the second interpretation. He says the third interpretation is the reason why it's specifically a ram is because it's a piece of leather that they tie by the genital area, which is specifically the male that has the, the external genital, so that they shouldn't mount onto the females. And, and Tracy explains, so why is that the terminology levuvin? Actually, here it means that they should not come close, but as Tracy brings, as we find many times in Tanakh, that a word can mean the opposite of what it means. Like, for example, to sharish could either mean to take root or to uproot. And we find this many times in those who know, who understand etymology, that it has the, the opposite understanding too. So therefore here, levuvin means the exact opposite, to keep them away. It's to put it on their general that they should not mount, that they're allowed to go out like that, uh, in, into Rosh Hashanah on Shabbos. Says Yimah Mimai, how do you know this? Because Menigtani Sefer. Because the Mishnah continues, it says, Verechelim, and the ewes, which are the females, Yitzin's Shechuzes. They could go at Shechuzes. My Shechuzes. Now we're explaining one of the terminologies we didn't explain in the Mishnah. Shechuzes is the word Shechuzes. Shechuzes, Shechuzes, that's where the root is. Shechuzes in Ha'al Yashalehen Lamala. That it, 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 it holds up their tail upwards, where they, t- they would actually tie the tail of the, of, the, of the ewe upwards, that it shouldn't cover their genital area. Why? So that the male should mount them, because it's, it's open there. So, so that's what the Gemara explains. Reisha, when it was talking about the rams, the males, is because they should lay yalu in the caves. So that they shouldn't mount onto the females. And the sefa is because they should yalu in the is that they should mount onto them. So you see, it's the same idea. So that's how we could understand that that's what the woman means to say. It means to tie down that they shouldn't. And then the other one was that they should. Now, Taisa actually asked, you should have rather compared it, as we'll explain in the next of, of Kavulais, which is actually the same exact, it's actually when they tie the tail of the female down, that it, the, the male should not mount it, then that would be exactly like this halacha of Levuvin, which is that the male should not mount it. But Tay says it's just because Shchuzis is earlier in the, in the Mishnah, therefore we quoted that, but it's just saying it's the same idea about, about, pro, about, uh, about um, procreation, about, about having a, 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 a mounting on the animal, therefore we said that that's obviously the interpretation of what Levuvin is. And the Gemara concludes, my mashal is shchuzes lishnu degluyehu. How do you know that shchuzes, which we said it's for the female to have its tail up, it's a terminology of exposure because you're exposing the female that the male should mount it. Because the like it says the pasuk in Mishlei says, "Vehine and behold, Isha the Karase, a woman was coming towards him as a katan tabam nadelam alf shis exposed, meaning that's a terminology of the of the of the private area of his like zaina like a harlot v'nitzaris slave and surrounding the heart. But one thing is that we see that. Uh, the word shis, zaina, exposed like a harlot, is the natrikin, is the acronym of shechuzais. Shis, zaina, has the shin and the zayin vav over there. 
So therefore, we see that shechuzah is the terminology of exposing the way a harlot is, and therefore that's how we know that shechuzah means that they say that the rechelim are shechuzahs, that we're going to mount it, that we're going to have it up, that it should mount, and therefore levuvin is the exact opposite, that we tie the tail down, that it should not mount. Some of these we spoke about in today's daf, in Shabbos, daf nun gimel, was we, we started a new mishnah, which again continued on the theme of bameh, Behema Yaitza, which is the title of this parak. Let's get a stronger color. With what does an animal go out on Shabbos? So we said that a donkey could go out with a saddle cloth. And we said that it's if it's tied onto it. That was regarding going into Rosh Hashanah. Now, we, as we wrote over here, as the Gemara qualifies a lot of these teachings. So in the courtyard... So that's what, that was going to Rosh Hashanah. In the courtyard, it's actually permitted to put on the saddle cloth even on Shabbos. Why? Because of Tsar. That everyone agrees to because of pain, Tsar Balechayim, that you're allowed to go ahead and do the Tircha for it on Shabbos. So on Shabbos, you're allowed to put the saddle cloth on it on Shabbos. Now, there was a machloikis regarding a traskel, regarding a feeding basket, because that's just what's called tainik, just pleasure. That's a machloikis Rabin Shmuel if you're allowed to do that. Now, Although we're saying that you're allowed to put on the saddle cloth in the courtyard, in the private domain, on Shabbos, because it's Tsar, and we said a machlik is by Traskel, but whereas the ukif, as we explained for Shmuel, taking off the saddle, that's just to cool it down. That we said it doesn't really need that. That's also like just called tainag, because it's going to cool down very fast anyway, because we said even in the summer months, the animal is always, is always going to be cold. So therefore, it's going to get cooled down very quick anyway. So that's why we had a brisa that says, you're not allowed to take off the saddle. Now, so then regarding the Allah of the Mishnah, which was discussing regarding Rosh Hashanah we said that, the, yeah, the donkey could go out with the saddle cloth into Rosh Hashanah if it was tied onto it. So now we qualified in the Gemara. That's, however, as Shmuel says, if it was tied on from before Shabbos, which we have in the Rosh Hashanah exactly why, what, why can't it? But that's what he said, that it has to be tied on from before Shabbos. And then we had a machlaikis regarding the saddle from before Shabbos, that was a machlekes tanoim. If the same thing applies to a saddle, if that was tanoim from before Shabbos, it would go out Rosh Hashanah or not. Is that considered a mas or is that considered no? It warms it up and therefore could go out like that to Rosh Hashanah. Some of the other halachas we spoke about in the Mishnah was regarding the rams. They could go out levuvin, which we'll get to at the end of the daf. Three different interpretations of what exactly does levuvin mean. We said that, and we'll explain this on the next daf, and one of them we already explained at the end of this daf, that rechelas, which are the ewes, that's the female sheep. They could go out shechuzis, which we just explained that's exposed. That's to have its tail hanging up. And kavulis and kavunis. I'll explain on the next stop what it is, but the female sheep could go out like that too. The goats could go out, according to the Tanakama, we have a three remachlekes over here, could go out tsururis, with the udders tied together. Rebiesi says no. All the caves of Tanakama are all forbidden, except one exception is kavunis which that's when you wrap the, the, the wool from the day it's born that shouldn't get ruined, as we'll explain in the next stuff. And Rabbi Huda, he holds the Tanakh but he differentiates. He says, yes, the goats could go out with the udders tied together, but it's only if it's to dry up the milk, but not if it's to get the milk. And we have different interpretation. Rishayinim, one simple understanding is because to dry, it's very tight, which is mahadik, it's not going to fall. And here it's loy mahadik, it might fall, and you might come to carry a dalamas in Rosh Hashanah. Then we had a brice in the Gemara, parenthetically, because it was brought in because of a question we were going to ask on Shmuel. So then the Gemara explains a lot of the halachas of that b'raisa. It said an animal cannot go out with a kameya that's mumcha. So the Gemara explained, ah, uh, well, it can't go out with mumcha. It could. It just can't go out if it's mumcha of a person. Because a behemish is what's called shlemazel, that uh, doesn't have mazel. And therefore, the kameya of a person might not help. Although that of an animal might help. So then why is that a stringency of an animal versus a person? We said it's not. We actually said that regarding sandal, that we said that's the case of a chumrah by behemoth versus that of an adam. Now, the Gemara says, okay, but according to everyone you're telling me that a mardas, a saddle cloth, is permitted because it's tzar. I, we have a bride that says, you're not allowed to even just anoint the animal with oil. So, and, and that we see that even though it's sar, so it says the Gemara, no, that's the end of the wound, which just for tiny, and again, that's like Shmuel, and Rashi says that Rav is Tanahu apology, so it's okay enough to ask on him from a bride, so he, he could technically disagree. But, but for Shmuel, we answer that, no, that it's, it's just for tiny, and therefore it's forbidden. I, we have a bride that says that if, let's say, the blood is congealed, you can't cool him down in water. I, it's sar. 
So one answer is you're right, even though it's tsar, but it's, it's, a, it's a decree because of refuah. You now do it because of it might come to grind the herbs. Now, in contrast to a person, we said in that Brayse, a lot of do because it just looks like he's cooling down. It doesn't look like refuah. And yes, as the Gemara ultimately concluded, we make this gezeri even by makam seida because that Allah of Tchumen was a different case and there wasn't even any real issue because really the Tchum of the behema, which was by a raya, it wasn't the Tchum of the person himself. Or a second interpretation the Gemara gave is actually no, the halacha we rule not like that, right? So we actually say that it's permitted to go ahead and cool up the animal because of tsar. Because actually we don't hold it, it's a machalik we don't hold like that, right? So because actually, as we rule, that there's no gezerah of refuah for an animal Shabbos because you're not going to come to get so caught up and grind herbs to do malacha de rice for an animal. It's only for a person that you might do it. Now, in that b'risa, we had a halacha that's contradicted with another b'risa because that b'risa says, one b'risa says the goats could go out with the, with the pouch on their udders. Another one says you can't. So how do we resolve that contradiction? So three interpretations. Either the b'risa says it's permitted to when it's fight, tightly fastened. The one that says you can't, it's not tightly fastened. Or the Bryce says you could go out as Toma like Remeyer of our Mishnah that permits it, and the one that says Bidden is like Rabbi Yesi. Or, no, actually, both Bryce's are like Rabbi Huda, and the one that says permitted is by Yavish. The one that says it's forbidden is when you're doing it, as we explained in the Halakha of our Mishnah. Now, parenthetical to the largeness of the, of the udders, which that's the permissibility of making the pouch that it shouldn't scrape on the ground, of the goat, we spoke about uh, uh, Alman, the person who lost his wife, that he also had the expansion of his breast, and he was able to nurse his babies, which it was a machlik is amiram, is that considered greatness of him or inferiority that Hashem had to change my sabrations. And also then another story regarding a man that also lost his wife, that it also spoke about not her modesty, because that's normal for the woman to be like that, but he didn't recognize his wife was missing an arm until the day that she died, talking about his modesty. And the last halacha that we spoke about in the daf was from the, the mission that said that the rams, they could go out levuven. What's levuven? So the Gemara has three different interpretations. Either it means tusri, that they go out in pairs, which, as we brought up possibly, there's libaftani. It's a terminology of getting close. That's how pairs. Or it means to put a piece of leather by their heart. And yes, that's specifically the rams because they walk with their nose up, the nose up in the, in, in, in the Shemayim, and therefore the, the, the zevim are, 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 are become contentious with them, the wolves. Or it actually means specifically the rams because it's by their genital area that is a piece of leather that they should not mount on the females because that's exactly similar to the next case where the Mishnah talks about shechuzes, which is that you tie the tail upwards that the male should mount on that, which that we know means pulling it up because it's a terminology of gilui, of exposing, that we brought a passing from a zainam. So therefore, that's what it means over here by the levuvin is to tie it down, and that's to tie their tail up. Again, one's the male, one's the female, but it's both about mounting. Therefore, that, that's how we know that the third interpretation would be of levuvin is that they should tie the tail down, uh, to tie their genital area down, that they shouldn't mount on the females. Thank you to any time for hosting us.